My name is Heather Bearden. I am a child neurologist and a specialist in pediatric movement disorders, and I am the medical director for the Phelps Center for Cerebral Palsy at Kennedy Krieger Institute. Chorea is a movement disorder characterized by inability to sustain a posture with an overflow of additional movements that tend to have a twitchy quality, oftentimes moving from one joint to another. It tends to get worse during times of excitement, stress, activation of other muscles, as well as getting better when people are resting or when they're sleeping. So chorea in people with cerebral palsy is not the most common movement disorder that we see. Spasticity and dystonia are definitely more common. However, it is oftentimes part of a bigger picture that we see. So when we do see it, it's very frequent in patients who have a lot of dystonia that they also have some chorea as a piece of that. Just like there are a lot of causes of cerebral palsy, there are also a lot of causes of chorea within individuals who have cerebral palsy. However, most of the time, what we see is that there's either an injury or some sort of dysfunction that's going on in the deep movement centers of the brain called the basal ganglia. This is part of the brain that um, helps regulate the movements that you do or don't make um, without even thinking about it. And um, when there's dysfunction there, it oftentimes presents as either chorea or other types of extra movements. So there isn't a specific test to help us diagnose chorea. It's really a clinical observation that we have that's based on what we see as well as what the patient is able to describe in terms of their experience. There are scales that we can use to measure chorea and in the end it's really the eye of the observer that's important. So it's really important to have somebody who's familiar with chorea is to be able to recognize and differentiate it from other movement disorders and also to help guide treatment. There are a lot of options for treatment for chorea. One of the important questions to ask before we decide on any treatment is how is this affecting the individual? If it's not bothering them, we may not need to do anything for treatment. Sometimes treating anxiety or pain can in and of itself help with the chorea, but if needed, there are a lot of different medications that can be tried. 